Right. So we're what? We're, 19, we're now on to 1935. When he arrives as manager at Chatterley Whitfield. Ernest has got his job. That's right. I'm going to school at Wolfstanton Grammar School. You've been uh, uprooted. Yes. And you, you arrive at uh, your new house in Borg Whitfield Road? That's Whitfield? right. Number, number one Whit Whitfield Villas, yes. Where? No, the next one to where Jeff lives now. So you would be confronted with uh, a great big slag heap in front of you? That's right. Not, not, not that quite. big. Not that big then. We made it bigger you later made on. It, I heard, I've seen about that. And then to your right you have the road uh, and would have been the tub halls then? Could they exist in 35? What, the, uh, the... The tub halls off the Hesketh. Oh yes, and then to the back of to the back of you, if if on a good day, you'd see the sidings and all the steam engines going right, up and that, down. That, that's right. Getting there. That's right. You are. I'm getting there. Right. Okay. And then obviously you you had to get sorted, and uh, my first involvement when I was still at school. I was Chasing off early to catch a bus to school, I looked back up at the pit and saw the ropes hanging down at the middle pit slack. I'm not quite sure when that was, but it was certainly 37 this year. And, and I went back to Dad and called him upstairs, I think he was in, having a shave, and I said, are you doing anything at the middle pit today, Dad? And he said, no, why? I said, well, the ropes are hanging bloody slack. Oh, I think yeah. he put the razor down and went past me. <laughs> it's a fair rate of knots. So the, the wooden guard rods had split. Right. But there was no fatal accidents. OK, lovely on that one. And then and that gets me to school. That gets you to school. To, to, oh, back to, to, to work. To every day, yeah. That, that's right. So 1930, I, 1935 to 1938? Oh, no, that was still at school. Yeah. 38. Yeah, and that's it. That's right. So what did you qualify then at Wolfstanton? I, I just uh, got... Maths or it's School maths, certificate. School yeah. certificate. That's right. And really, after that, John, were you were you destined for the pit? Oh well, yes, because we left. I was with Teddy Wood at that time. Jack Wood was at school with me. <coughs> yeah. And we left in the September, on the basis that we were going to technical school. Yeah. Because we weren't going into the sixth form because the headmaster hadn't got anybody to teach us geology. We asked. Oh, right, yeah. And so we left and went to Tech College. Which is Victoria Road? That's right. Right, OK. The first bloke I saw when we registered in September of that year was Teddy Wood. <laughs> Teddy Wood. Right, OK. Well, stuff. And then, so, when you left school, did you go down, were you up? Straight down a pit. Right. As well as doing your technical stuff. Oh yes. So your your first your first job then, nineteen thirty eight. Yes, you are going to be surprised at this because it's the start of my dad's mental approach to life. Right. I was given into an old man whose sole job it was laying tub tracks. Right, yeah, OK. And so I had to learn how to lay tub tracks to start with. Yeah. And so then, where, would, where would that be then? A anywhere in anywhere the pit. within the pit? Yes. So w where, what would be operating then? You'd have the Hesketh? Oh, yes. Institute. Institute. Mid middle. Platt. Platt. Engine? No. No, no, no engine. That had gone? Yes. And you still got the... Winstonley. you still got the Winstonley, haven't you? Yeah, that's right. Right. So a lot of... Because obviously 
you, you talked about uh, roadways and mileages and that. I oh, know that's right. In 19, I think 1930, there was an audit, and you're talking about probably 41 to 45 miles Correct. of underground roadway. That's right. So th there were men employed virtually full time. When I think back, it, it amazes me. Do you know we had 13 coal faces at that time? Yeah. It, it, it's important in a minute. Yeah. From, from another point of view, that um, this is hearsay. The Coal Owners Association in 1938 in Stoke-on-Trent agreed definitely that there was going to be a war. R yes. And as a consequence, they changed into six-day work. Yeah. And were prepared to stock up to a million tons of coal ready for the Stop war. Stockpile, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so we suddenly went from three days to six. Three-day week? Yeah, to six. The, well, was, was the three day week imposed because you were producing too much? Oh, yes. And you were producing too much because in 1937 ish you got a million tons, hadn't you? That's right. Ah. Oh. No, well, that was just that. Was that, that? No, that you're right. I think they went on to the six day week just before the, the 37 million tons. They d decided earlier. Right, to go, go to full time. Go for it. Yes. Right. All but right. it was stimulated, I, I believe, by the owners saying that there was going to be a something war. Was, something's on the horizon. That's right. Here we go. And yes, get as much as you can right. and go for it. And Dad had just arrived, and Dad was raring to go anyway. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> make, to make a point. That's right. Yeah, yeah, he wanted to get the best, best out of it. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So the yeah, so 1938 onwards, things started to progress a little bit, very but, rapidly. But uh, <coughs> round about, round about that time, there was a lot of work at the pit, wasn't there? Oh yes. You got the pit head baths. That was being, right. That was being finished. That's right. And the boilers were. And the new boilers were in. Somebody had a, a fair amount of thinking to do from about the 1925 period onwards about what Whitfield was going to be like and they had to face the problem that they would got six steam engines winders something like that all steam we got two big haulage ropes steam driven from the surface down the institute pit and down the black pit and did they go electric or did they stay on steam? Right. And I think round about that time, 34-ish, 35-ish, the decision was the made, decision was made steam. steam. I've often wondered about that but it can only have been that because they built the biggest set of boilers. boilers in the country in one piece. In hindsight, it would have both been better electric. That's right. You, you've got it. You've got it. Wouldn't it? Yes. I, mean, they, I don't know how you feel, but I don't know whether, whether it's a controversial speech or not, but technically we were worse off after the war for steam engines. Correct. Because all the German ones that were destroyed, they went on to diesel. Uh, that's diesel, it, diesel it, electric. It, it, that's and, right. And we're still producing steam. steam in the 1950s. Correct. Because we've got the coal. That's right. Whitfield was left in, in the most efficient steam operated pit, I think, in the country, but it was still not good enough. It would have been better electric. Right. Okay. And that also applies because the first electrics they had were in the middle pit, uh, in the, just after the middle pit was sunk, they put in a DC generator, 
and the, the fan they still put in was compressed air.